Happy birthday, Nintendo NX. Oops, I mean, uh, Nintendo Switch. Whoa, sorry about that. Force of habit. Yep, while it's pretty crazy to think that the Nintendo Switch is already trending one on March 3rd, it's even crazier that we've been talking about it in some form for almost three years. Except for the majority of that time, it was known as Codename NX. And while we've known it as the Nintendo Switch for 16 months by now, we actually knew it as the Nintendo NX for even longer, a whopping 19 months. So given that this is a week of celebration, I wanted to take a look back at where it truly started, before we knew the Switch as the Switch, and only as the incredibly nebulous NX. So join us as we venture down a path full of tidbits, patents, rumors, and leaks in order to relive the nearly 20 month long journey that brought us to the Nintendo Switch. March 17th, 2015. It was on that day, during a joint press conference of DNA, that Iwata dropped a bomb. Well, two actually. One was that Nintendo was finally going to start making mobile games. But the other was that work was already underway on a new game platform with a brand new concept, under the development codename NX. At the time, it wasn't clear the announcement was for a console or a handheld. Which seems a little quaint now, doesn't it? Just listen to my gut reaction from our discussion following the news. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out, like, w what this could be. Uh, you know, like, is it a console? Is it a portable type of system? Is it an entirely new type of device? I think there might be a slight hint with the image they revealed, uh, again, with it, uh, the codename NX being on it, along with the Wii U 3DS and the, you know, tablet, PC, and smartphones. And that seems like it might be suggesting that it's a third pillar type of a device, or a complementary type of device as well. One that's not meant to replace either of those necessarily, kind of presenting in the same way as the Nintendo DS. But as we all know, that eventually did just straight up replace the GBA. <laughs> uh, so I do wonder like, if we are truly seeing like, their next system. It truly was a mystery. Remember, the Wii U had just barely released two years earlier, which wouldn't even be halfway through a typical console's lifespan, so it would be absurd to announce a successor so soon, right? Well, it would have been if the Wii U hadn't already been an unprecedented failure for a Nintendo console. As Iwata himself explained in an interview with Time Magazine a few days later, he didn't have much of a choice when announcing it. He stated that, the reason why I announced NX, which by the way is not directly related to our alliance with DNA, was because I wanted to avoid any misunderstandings such as, Nintendo might have lost its passion for the dedicated game system business. And because I wanted many people to understand that Nintendo will continue its dedicated game system business with even stronger passion and motivation. And looking back now, he completely nailed it. After its release, the Nintendo Switch went on to become the fastest selling game system of all time, in addition to completely dominating the 2017 Game of the Year awards. Stronger passion indeed. But at the time, no one quite knew what any of this meant. All we knew was that the NX would be a new game platform with a brand new concept, and that Nintendo would reveal more the following year. So there really wasn't much to go off of. But despite this, check out what Derek had to say at the end of our initial NX discussion. With the whole third pillar thing, I wonder if it's almost like a, the idea is to really be the bridge between mobile and home console gaming, mm -hmm. uh, where, like, the same concept as the gamepad, except, the it, like, imagine the gamepad is instead just a 3DS, mm -hmm. and taking it wherever you want to go, and it's just all bundled together, and you can have both 3DS experiences on there, and Wii U, and console experiences on there. So, maybe that's the direction they could go in? Yeah, he pretty much hit it on the head there. Even if we wouldn't fully know that for another year and a half, when the Switch was finally revealed. Anyway, it wasn't until May of 2015, nearly two months after the NX announcement, that we would even get a hint of the NX again. At a Q&A with investors, Iwata, in response to a question about Nintendo's stance on region locking, said that although they had nothing to announce, they were looking into the possibility of lifting region locks for the Nintendo NX. And as we now all know, the Switch did indeed end up being region free. So score another one for Iwata. That was then followed by another two months of near silence, until July of 2016, when Square Enix announced that Dragon Quest XI would launch the following year on PlayStation 4, 3DS, and Nintendo NX. Yep, the NX had its very first game announcement, well before anyone even knew what an NX was. And since the game was due for release in 2016, it seemed to reason that the NX would also launch that same year. Which, of course, didn't happen. In fact, even Dragon Quest XI didn't release until 2017 for the 3DS and PS4 in Japan, and it still isn't out on the Switch, despite again technically being its first game announcement. But whether or not it eventually releases on Switch is largely irrelevant, because the mere announcement of it was arguably more important than the game itself. Here's Derek of July 2015 to explain why. Well, it says two things to me. One is that the NX will definitely, if this is true, the NX will definitely 
be on par with the PS4 and Xbox One as far as graphically. Uh, maybe not to their, their exact specs, but enough that we can get ports into other games because if you've seen the Dragon Quest XI footage, it is gorgeous. The other exciting thing is that not only is this the first game we've had potentially confirmed for the NX, it's a third-party game. And not only that, but a huge third-party game, like the biggest in Japan. And that bodes well that, like, okay, Square Enix sees something here that they want to su potentially support and is willing to put their flagship franchise on. Unfortunately, things once again quieted down for the next few months, except for a pair of discovered Nintendo patents, one of which suggested that the NX wouldn't feature an optical disk drive at all, and might use cartridges instead, which of course ended up being accurate. And in hindsight, this was our first concrete hint that the NX wouldn't be a typical console. But the thing with patents is that you can never know for sure whether they'll actually lead somewhere, as another patent discovered a couple of months later illustrated. That one suggested that Nintendo's next device might feature clickable scroll wheels in place of shoulder buttons. Which, yeah, didn't pan out. But the fact that gamers were looking to patents for any kind of NX clues revealed the sheer desperation for new information. Finally, in October 2015, more than six months after the NX announcement, we had a breakthrough. Sort of. The Wall Street Journal reported that Nintendo had finally begun distributing development kits for the NX. And that article offered our first real hint as to what the NX might actually be. It stated, the exact shape of the NX hardware isn't yet clear. People familiar with the development plan said Nintendo would likely include a console and at least one mobile unit that could either be used in conjunction with the console or taken on the road for separate use. They also said Nintendo would aim to put industry-leading chips in the NX devices, after criticism that the Wii U's capabilities didn't match those of competitors. So this established two things, that the NX would be relatively powerful, and that a mobile component would play a key role. Of course, the article did imply that this involved two separate devices, which ultimately wasn't the case. Unless the console portion that the article refers to was actually in reference to the system's TV dock, which would make a lot more sense. Two months later, following Iwata's unfortunate passing, Time Magazine had the chance to interview Nintendo's new president, Tatsumi Kimishima. And although he didn't really offer any new details on the NX, his comments are interesting to reflect on. He reiterated that Nintendo wasn't looking to build the next version of Wii or Wii U. Instead, it was something unique and different, and that it would be the next step in their dedicated device strategy as the core and primary focus of Nintendo's business. And in hindsight, it's clear that he was right on the money, so to speak. Now by this point, everyone had been talking about the NX for nearly 9 months, without even knowing what the letters NX signified. And apparently, neither did Kimishima, who explained, I don't believe there's any real meaning behind it, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know where it came from. So it's almost fitting that NX would be a mystery to even Nintendo itself. But it's that exact mystery that would lead people to latch onto anything and everything as a possible clue. Because just a week later, another Nintendo patent was discovered, this time for an oval-shaped device making use of a freeform screen which a lot of people assumed might be for the NX, and it would form the basis for one of the most memorable moments in the NX's lengthy journey. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, because beyond general rumblings of an early 2016 reveal followed by release later that same year, that was pretty much it for the NX in 2015. But if 2015 could be summarized as the year of vague NX tidbits and patents, then 2016 had to be the year of rumors. Nintendo's silence left a gaping void, one that would soon be filled with whispers of rumors and leaks that quickly turned into a deafening roar. And this started just after the start of the new year, in January 2016, with talk of Super Smash Bros. being an NX launch title. And that was soon followed by rumors of Zelda for Wii U also coming to NX as a 2016 launch title, and that Nintendo was funding Beyond Good and Evil 2 as a 2017 NX title. But it all came to a head a couple of months later in late March, a full year after the NX's announcement, when a series of images appeared that purported to be the NX's controller, which matched the earlier patent, and it set message boards, discords, and Miiverses on fire as people argued endlessly about whether it was real or fake and what it could mean. Until a few days later when it was confirmed as an elaborate hoax by the creator. And it wasn't long after when the rumor mill began to churn out even more rumors, including talk of the NX being more powerful than the PS4, multiple Wii U ports being in the works, and it having a screen-based controller that could stream your games from anywhere over Wi-Fi, among many other rumors. It was exhausting, partially because it was near impossible to tell what was real, fake, or maybe somewhere in between. The endless supply of rumors is growing thin for the growing impatience of Nintendo fans, who were tired of the lack of concrete information, but little did they know that they still had a 7 month wait until they would finally learn what the NX actually was. But hey, E3 was just around the corner, so there was a long to wait, right? Except that's not quite how it went down. Because in April of 2016, a full two months before E3, 
Nintendo took the unusual step of announcing their E3 plans ahead of time, or lack thereof. They not only announced that the NX wouldn't be at E3 at all, but that it also wouldn't even be released that year, and would instead come out in March of 2017. But hey, at least we finally had a release date, right? Even if it was far later than anyone expected. And as part of this, Nintendo also announced that Zelda Wii U would in fact be released on the Nintendo NX, as many expected, which is a good thing. Except that meant it too was delayed to the following year, without even confirming whether it would be a launch title or not. So needless to say, it was a pretty disappointing time to be a Nintendo fan. But you know who can explain that even better? Andre and Ash of 2016 who recorded the discussion immediately after. Here's what we said then. Oh, dude, man, I... Tonight's been rough, dude. <laughs> dude, man. Man, dude. Man, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh... I mean, they're not doomed, but this is really depressing. Like, <laughs> like I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go out and say this is the worst thing in the world and what are they thinking and they're, they're run by idiots, but this is, like, legitimately disappointing and kind of concerning to me. Kimishima would later explain that the reason the NX wouldn't be released in 2016 was in order to ensure that there would be a steady stream of games after the launch period. And sure enough, he was true to his word, with the Switch getting a major first-party release nearly every single month after launch up until December. Now keep in mind that at that point in time, we still had no idea what the NX's final form was going to be. So with a lack of news, can you guess what filled the void? Yep, even more rumors including reports that Retro might be working on a new IP for Nintendo NX, and that the entire reason it was pushed to 2017 was in order to add VR functionality, according to the Digi Times. Which, looking back, is clearly absurd. And yet, that same report also gave us what ended up being an incredibly accurate description of what the NX would be, in that they reported it was primarily a handheld that would also work on your TV like a console. Hmm. It just goes to show how out of control the rumors and reports were around this period of time where some elements from a report could be false, while other parts might be true. So E3 came and went with barely a whisper from Nintendo about the NX, but it was only a month later in July that Eurogamer ran this headline. Nintendo NX is a portable console with detachable controllers. The article stated that the NX will function as a high-powered handheld console with its own display, but that it's bookended by two controller sections on either side, which can be attached or detached as required. They continue that, when you get home, the system can connect to your TV for gaming on the big screen via a dock, and that it would all be powered by NVIDIA's Tegra processor. So there it was, a credible report from a credible source, all of which ended up being completely true. So it seemed like that we finally knew what form the NX would take, thank god. But there were still some mysteries left, some of which were seemingly answered about a month later when Let's Play Video Games backed up Eurogamer's report and added a few details of their own such as the fact that both detachable controllers would feature motion controls, as well as an updated form of force feedback, a lot of the HTC Vive. Emily Rogers then built off of this with a few more specifics, reporting that the NX would feature a 6-inch screen running at 720p with multi-touch support, and that too was spot on. Let's Play Video Games then returned a few days later, adding that the controllers would feature a segmented D-pad, as well as a dedicated button for snapping screenshots, both of which, once again, were completely true. The floodgates had finally opened, although not quite officially. Although, even Nintendo's development partners started talking a little bit more openly about the platform, with the Pokemon Company's CEO in September not only confirming that they will be making games for the NX, but also seemingly verified Eurogamer's report by stating that the NX is trying to change the concept of what it means to be a home console device or a handheld device. Ubisoft also joined in, praising the system by saying, The new Nintendo console is a fantastic machine. It's really a new approach. It's really Nintendo which is coming with something new again. So yeah, things were clearly heating up. And then it happened. Nintendo tweeted out at 5.30pm on October 19th what everyone wanted to hear, that they would finally reveal what the NX is, via a 3 minute trailer at 7am the following day, or just 13 hours later. And the internet collectively exploded. Nintendo of America's tweet alone got 45,000 likes. And just check out these reactions from our own YouTube comment section. And when 7am rolled around, those opening moments were unforgettable, with a man playing a brand new Zelda game on his TV before walking over to the console, clicking the detachable controllers into place, and then taking the entire thing with him to play on the go. And we finally had our name. Nintendo Switch. The name NX is almost instantly forgotten, like an off switch. And even though the Nintendo Switch wouldn't be out for another 4 months, and for as many answers as we got, we still had just as many questions, we at least finally knew for sure what Nintendo's next system would be, which also marked the end of the wild ride from what we know as the NX. A ride that, at times, seemed like it would never end. But what are some of your memories of the build-up from NX until the reveal of the Switch? 
Let us know by posting in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more future Switch coverage and even more from Game Explained.